So this video is kind of a um, uh, kind of a thought process of how to start a project um, and the steps that I take to to do the project. So my wife has a keyboard, a Yamaha keyboard, and she doesn't like playing it with the speakers because everybody can hear her make mistakes and things like that. So she likes to practice with headphones on. That's great. Uh, but she wanted to start playing along with songs that she um, hears on YouTube or that she has a soundtrack for. Or uh, there's a lot of uh, teachers on, on YouTube and uh, she can play along with the teacher and stuff. So what, really needed, what she really needed was a mixer to take the output of the keyboard and the output of her iPhone and mix them together and then, and then put them into the headphones and uh, it turns out that that's not such a simple thing to do. Um, I went to Sweetwater which I buy most of my uh, musical stuff from and I asked them and there was a particular mixer that I was interested in. It was only $23 for the mixer and I thought oh I could, I could get the mixer and uh, but I wasn't sure if the mixer could drive headphones and the guy uh, replied in email and he said, uh, no, it can't. Uh, it's just line output. So you need to have a, a headphone amplifier as well. And he pointed me to a mixer that had a headphone output. So you could mix and you could monitor things with a headphone. But that was more like $65 or something. And I went, hmm, well, maybe I can just build something and um, save a lot of money. And hey, I'm supposed to be designing stuff anyway. <laughs> And I thought, well, maybe I'll just take two resistors, take the output of the iPhone and take the output of the uh, keyboard, just mix them just with two resistors, and maybe that will drive the headphone. But I thought, uh, I don't want to have two outputs kind of fighting each other. I really need a mixer. I really need to have buffered, a buffered input on both sides, or, or high impedance at least on both sides. So I thought, hmm. And then I looked at the... Uh, block diagram of the um, device that Sweetwater wanted to sell me and it was basically some op amps uh, in buffer mode to take the inputs and then a um, amplifier, a, a headphone amplifier to drive the headphones on the output. And I thought, okay, well, where can I start? So I looked up, uh, I have a bunch of LM386 amplifiers which make great headphone amplifiers. So I looked on um, you, not YouTube, I looked on Google and looked for a circuit that I could maybe hack and uh, I found this one and let me zoom in a bit on that and so I thought hey great this is uh, almost what I need uh, it has a, a headphone output and a speaker output get stuff out of my hair. and um, so if the switch is this position you have a 47 ohm resistor to uh, on each side of a stereo headphone jack and I thought okay great uh, I'll just uh, put it in this position I don't need the speaker so we'll get rid of that but I like this it has the 386 um, it's mono and then uh, the two sides of the headphone are tied together so it becomes the stereo headphones become mono and you're sending the same signal to the left and right and it has the normal 386 stuff. Okay, great. It has an input a battery. See, I don't want a battery. So I'm going to put in a... Uh, I'll get rid of the battery. I'll put in a... Uh, uh, a switch. I mean, a switch. A, a, a connector here. Uh, that is a, um, a power connector on the back. Um, well, you don't really need filter capacitors, but... Uh, Go ahead and leave them in. And then the input here is mono, but I'm going to have stereo input because the output of the keyboard looks like this. It looks like a stereo output. And of course the iPhone is a stereo output. So I'm going to have, uh, to have another um, jack um, that is a uh, stereo one eighth inch for the uh, iPhone, and then I'm going to have a. Um, let's see how do you draw these. A 
have a, a quarter inch phono jack with a tip and ring. Um, and so there's two wires coming out of this plus ground. This is ground. Uh, this is crown on my off screen here. There we go. So I'll have that. So so this will go into the keyboard and this will allow me to connect to the iPhone. And so I have uh, two inputs here and I have two inputs here. So I'm going to mix those two inputs to, to make it mono. So a couple resistors to make them mono. So I'll have mono uh, here, mono there, and then um, I'm going to just tie these together and so these resistors will will balance things out and not cause any problems of one side getting into the other side. And then I can just have this uh, go get rid of all of this, don't need this, uh, go into the amplifier. So that's my idea. Um, two inputs mixed together with these resistors. Um, the input impedance of the 386 is about 50k, so quite high impedance. Um, just the base of the um, base of PNPs, I believe, inside the 386. It's a uh, um, dual, dual input, plus minus input, and the minus input is just grounded. You're just using the plus input. And so it's high impedance already. So really just these resistors are only needed to protect each other. And I don't know, I just said, ah, let me, let me make them 2K, whatever. I'm going to make all four resistors 2K. And uh, we'll go from there. So, um, how do I then go about building this thing? Well, I'm going to use a proto board. And uh, on one of my videos I showed some aluminum boxes that I got uh, from the junk um, sale. And so let me show you what uh, what I came up with. Okay, so I found, found an old proto board. Let me make sure that's in focus. It doesn't look like it's in focus. Um, it's an old HP proto board that I had squandered since the 1980s. <laughs> I decided to use it finally. Um, it's a really interesting proto board. Not very functional, but it, it's okay for something like this. So um, it has been hacked down to fit inside the case. But it's gold plated, which is nice. And it has two little places for a socket. And so um, I have the uh, LM386 here and some associated uh, resistors and capacitors. Here's the big capacitor for the uh, uh, power, uh, power jack. Uh, this is for the iPhone. And then the big uh, connector here is for the uh, headphones. I kind of ran out of room, so I'm going to put the other. Uh, uh, plug stereo plug that goes into the um, goes into the keyboard. I'm going to put that on the end of this thing. So just will plug into the keyboard. Then you'll plug your iPhone in here, and uh, those get mixed together, and then it comes on the output. So that's what I ended up with. It's not very pretty. Um, kind of embarrassing to show stuff that I actually just kind of cobbled together. But hey, that's what it is. It seems to work just fine. Um, and then. And then we're going to have the, the little box that it fits inside, put a little label on it. And so that will slide inside and I'll be ready to go. So let me, uh, let me put it together and see what it looks like. All right, one step before I put it together, uh, I'm going to take a uh, schematic uh, that I uh, took and had it all marked up. This is my original and I'm going to fold that up and I'm going to put it, that inside the box. So if I ever have to work on this thing, I'll know where the schematic is. It's right there. So you might think that having a whole bunch of little drawers with lots of electronic components, I would have exactly what I needed. Um, and uh, unfortunately I don't. <laughs> I have a mono plug, but I don't have a stereo plug. So. I'm going to have to order something off of eBay and uh, wait for my stereo plug. Let, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So the last step is to add the uh, quarter inch jack to onto the end of the uh, plug onto the end of the uh, cable here. And unfortunately, I only, have, I only have quarter inch mono. 
I don't have quarter inch stereo. So anyway, they're a dollar. So I ordered some off of eBay and they should be here in a few days. I'll get it together and she should be ready to go. And my wife should be happy. Before we go, I should mention one thing. Um, if you notice, there's no volume knob on this thing. And I thought that maybe I did need a volume knob. And so I tested all the, the inputs. So at a reasonable volume of phono outputs, I got a reasonable volume through the amplifier. So everything kind of worked all good without any adjustments. But if you needed to put in a volume uh, knob, let me show you how to do that. Uh, you would uh, cut this line here and then you would add a potentiometer up here, potentiometer to ground and you would take the output and then you would bring that into into here. So instead of feeding these directly you feed them into a potentiometer and you have max volume and mid volume here and this could be uh, something like a 10k, a 10k resistor probably would work just fine or maybe even 100k uh, if, you're, if you started to load down your, uh, well you have these two K's in here so uh, you're probably not going to load it down, but probably a 10k, somewhere between a 10k and a 100k would be a good value for this uh, potentiometer and that would be your volume. Alright, sounds good.